Hi everyone. It's Liesl from Artist Palette and we are here doing Dusk on the Lake. All right, so I'm just going to adjust a few things, make sure everything fits nicely. There we go. Okay. All right, so you can see I have my paint palette. If you have a mixing palette on the side, you can use that, which I just didn't bring myself once. That's fine. A mix in between. I have white and um, bright red, or you can use primary red. You can use a phthalo blue or just a primary blue or even um, a slightly lighter blue. This is cadmium yellow or primary you can use is, is good as well. Uh, something on a slightly darker side is nice for some dark, dark greens. And this is not black. This is purple. So if you want a pre-mixed bit of purple or um, pre-mixed greens, you can use that too. And I'm just going to put the black on because that is not black. That is actually purple. And then I'll go through my brushes. I have a water cup, some paper towel. This is a 12 by 16, but you can use something bigger or something a little smaller. Um, lots of details for smaller canvases. And you can pause and take your time throughout this video. You can even rewind and watch it later, as always. Yes, it's nice to be back. Um, been really busy with other things. Lots of stuff going on, but don't worry. Pretty much good stuff, really busy. But after the summer, should be back doing a lot more. Okay, I'm gonna get my black. Just give me one minute. Okay, I'm gonna put some black on my plate. It's kind of right in there, <laughs> mixing with the purple and it's fine. All good. So for my brushes, what I have here is I have my large flat, which I think is great. You can also use a round if you prefer a fuller brush, something like this is fine. Then I have my medium flat. So this one is a number four bright brush. Then you can use any of your detailed brushes, a number two to four, or this one's a number zero. And I see that there's a lot of thunderstorms and stuff, some crazy weather and different time, time zones that we're tuning in from. So that's great. Great time to start painting. Okay, let's start with our very large brush here. We're going to dip it in the water. And a little tap on our napkin. So we're going to focus a little bit on the top part because that's where the lighter colors are and we're going to mimic a little bit into the water as well. So we're gonna try and do a mirror image and it's gonna be pretty easy to work with. So what I wanna do here is I just wanna start with a very light yellow. So if you happen to have just a lemon yellow, you can always just opt for that or just add a bunch of white to your yellow. See the difference in the yellows? This one's a bit more cadmium orangey yellow. This is darker. This one's much brighter. It already has white in it, but you just add a little bit more and you got a super light yellow. See that? Nice and bright. Very lemony kind of looking. And then right around the very middle, so right around the center here, I was going to go back and forth like that. And it really depends on your preference. You can add a bit more white if you don't like it 
so bright yellow. If you like it softer, you just take another scoop of your white. You can wash off your brush and just make it very soft, faint yellow. So I just washed it off, tapped it a bit dry. You can just take your, your contaminated white, any white that's touching a bit of yellow, and just go back and forth. I like to go quite high because yellow is so bright, it's so light. It can, the colors that we're mixing, which is more of a peachy to pinkish orangey color, it mixes well with this. So you want to go, I would say, like up here, where right into where your moon would sit. So I'm just grabbing a little bit more. As you can see, it's still got that yellow tint to it. It's not just all white. So I'm just, all I did was kind of tone down all of that crazy yellow. A little bit of water can help and take it a long way. If you're finding that it's not mixing and blending so well, if you have really thick paint, back and forth, side to side, using the flat side of your brush. So in the meantime, while you have this, it's probably a good idea just to do a bit of this into where your water is going to be. Right? So you just want to do that and that will make everything a little bit easier to blend when you go into your peach creams. See? So my horizon is somewhere in here. It's not down here. It's, we just went and did a big section. Okay, someone's asking what number my large brush is. It is, that's a really good question. I am, from what I've seen other brushes, I'm pretty sure this is like an 18, at least a 16 to a 20. And I am Canadian too, so hello from Canada as well. I'm going to not wash this off, so I'm going to leave this on here. Okay, so it's okay if you have paint on it. If you wash it off, it's still okay. I'm just going to take a little touch of water, and we're going to continue because while it's wet, it's really good to start blending instead of waiting for it to dry. So we're going to take, you know, don't worry about if you don't have two yellows. It's not the point here. I'm just showing you adding white to some of your yellow will make it nice and light. If you want to take a little bit of this cadmium yellow, great. Or if you want to take more of that lemon, if you take your lighter yellow, just take less white. I'm just taking a bit more of that. And I want to take a little pea size or two of that. I'll take both just because <laughs> at least if you have one or the other, then it's, it's okay. So I'm going to take a little bit of red. See that little tiny touch of red? That might even be too much. You'll see. That's okay. We're going to take very orange. We're going to add a nice little bit of white into here. Let's take a bit more red. See? Little bits at a time. And now we're getting a bit more salmon pink. So the more you add little dots, the more it's going to turn more pinkish and less yellowy orange. You have to balance it out with a bit of white. So you don't want to take a big scoop of red. It's going to, you're going to go through all of your paint and you're going to wonder what happened. So this is what I want to start with, some salmon, kind of almost orangey looking color. And it's still light. It's not super dark. You just want to make sure it's light with the, the white here. Take a little touch of my water again. So I'm going to start at the top of my yellow, just above. See how it's looking. This is quite orange, but I'm okay with orange because I do want it to be at least a bit orangey. See how it looks before you start just going for it. I'm going to add a bit more red. Touch white. Another little dip of water. Because I do like that pinkish color. Back and forth. Now you can start using more of the thin side of your brush or you can just keep going. Press lighter with your brush. Not as heavy as you work your way down. So most of your paint's coming off at the top and then it's coming off less and less as you get down here. See, you can you can barely see the difference between these two colors as it disappears into your yellow.
Okay. So that's what I wanted to do there. So once I have that blend, I no longer want to play around with that. I just want to leave that. And it depends on, so I want to make sure there's still a lot of yellow around here. We want to keep in mind, which you can always change. You have mountains, right? You have mountains around this area. So try not to go down here. Remember, our horizon is somewhere around here. Okay. So my next thing, I'm going to take a bit more red. Just a bit more. I'm going to take maybe two more um, little pea sizes, maybe two to three. So it's very much more on the pinkish side in the same spot. Feel free if you have purple to just add in a touch of purple into this. You don't want it to be orange because as soon as you add purple to orange, brown. If it has a bit, even though it's on top of a bit of orange, like some of that yellow, it's still more pink and it's going to be okay. It gives you that mauve color. So if you have mauve, Use mauve. That's basically a light mauve. So I'm going to mix this. And if you want, you can add in a touch of blue if you don't have premixed purple or mauve. There, and you get a mauve color without having to use a premixed color. You just made it with more red. Need more red. We're not adding any more yellow. We're mixing right on top of this color. And just a tiny little dot of blue. See how a little blue, it just turned to more of a reddish purple. So let's start at the top, let's see how it's looking. I need a bit of water with my paint. And you know, it's easier to just take your premix purple instead of having to go and mix it. But not essential to have it, it's just more work, right? Okay, I'm gonna mix a little bit more. Tiny little dot of blue turns purple quite fast. I still want it to be more on the red pink side. It's just got that hint of purpley color. I'd like to start at the very top. You can always make it more purple after you do this coat. You don't need to go super purple really fast because that things can happen when you go really purple, dark purple, and you put it right on top of any orange, it just doesn't mix very well. So this mixes really well into what we just did. And I'm going to go, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more. You just take another, you can always add a bit more white if it's starting to get really dark, because as soon as you add dark colors, it gets really dark. Back and forth, bring it down, press a little bit lighter towards this, middle section you just press lighter with your brush you just lightly wisp it across side to side and go down there we can always come back and do another coat of more purple okay so what i want to do pause this finish up if you need to i'm going to go to the bottom and just, you can flip it upside down and do the same thing because it's basically the same thing. You're distracted by the blue, but we wanna do pretty much the same thing down here. I'm just gonna move this up so we can look at the bottom. So I'm gonna wash this off. From the bottom, I'm not too picky, right? Because you don't even, nobody's paying attention down here too much. But you can go back and make your color again. So your um, salmon color, right? Remember, you just need to add in a couple dots until you're happy with how pink it is. Or maybe you like it more orange. A couple dots of red. You don't want to go full out and balance it with some white with a little bit of your yellow because we started with light yellow, so we're just adding dots of red and some white until we're happy. So now we have our salmon again. Okay, so we're gonna use that, touch of water, then start below, see how it's looking. And it still looks a bit orangey. As I get into my yellow, press just light, very light, back and forth, the more you go over it, back and forth, the more it blends, very light. I'm gonna go a bit more pinkish. So I want a bit more of that red. Okay. 
Now that we're a bit more confident, maybe you can make it a little bit quicker. Then we go into, we add a little bit of purple and a bit more red. We do the same thing we did up here. You don't really see this, but it's good practice. If you're a bit of a lazy painter, no judgment, no one's watching, um, you can just opt out and just leave this for blue, right? But I think it's good to get your coverage so that your canvas is no longer showing underneath. It's not white. It will make it look darker and more opaque when you put a base coat. So I just want to say, when you're looking at going, you're like, this is the middle of my canvas. You've maybe you've measured it and everything. This is the middle. When you do your mountains, are you worried that you're not going to see your yellow anymore? If the answer is yes, just wash off your brush completely. And you can pop your bright lemony yellow, right? So just a little bit of yellow and scoop of white, pop that back in. You start from around the middle and you just drag it up. And also it helps blend anything out that was a bit too harsh, right? So you can just blend out some of your salmon or orange if you thought that it was taking over. So just be careful. Be careful that you don't overdo it. <coughs> Welcome in. Hi, Vicki. Yes, these are great colors. <clears throat> okay. So we do want to make sure that we're happy with our background before we move on to mountains and everything. Especially if you just put a fresh coat of yellow here. Blue mountains is on top of that, makes green. So I like to dry this off, so wash and dry it off. I like to go back to the top and just do one more coat of this purpley mauve color, um, but on the lighter side. If you like to go darker, feel free to do that. Um, into You don't need to mix all these colors again. You can just make it purple, right? So you'll have a hint of this underneath, unless you really love that mauve look with the touch, the slight little dot of yellow. Anyways. Um, so a little bit of blue and a scoop of red because it's not equal parts. Just remember that the ratio is not equal parts. It's mostly red dot or two of blue, depending on how purple you want to go. But this is a bit more pinkish and just a little touch of white. So maybe a, a bit more white if it's a bit too dark. You can take a little bit more. When you're happy with your color, Start from the top here again. It will give it more of a solid look. And just make sure you're happy with it before you move on, before you start going down. And you want to press really light as you get as it transitions out. Try not to go too far down. So you get a nice, solid, deeper purple color. If you like it more bluey purple, just add a touch more blue. Okay, so you can do the same thing at the bottom. You can skip it if you're not really caring too much. It's okay. You just go 
from the bottom upwards, press really lightly into here, and that's it. Now we have our transition. Okay, so I just washed and dried that off. And then we, we can start with our mountains. We want this to dry before you start doing a moon. I want to caution you with doing mountains. Try not to go too big because then you have little space for anything else. <clears throat> but before we just do that, let's do a little splatter for some stars or you can use the back handle of like a small brush and just poke around, to make some stars. I like to use the medium one or the detailed one. You just, the trick is to really water this down. So if you have too much um, paint on your brush and very little water, so if you have the opposite problem, you're going to splatter just paint and it's going to go everywhere. And you're not going to get that soft little spray almost. So fully submerge into my water and just make sure it's dripping. And you only want like a little bit of this white. See how I'm just taking a little bit and it's just soaked into my brush now. You can submerge it one more time just to make sure that it's like all watery and drippy. Okay, now I'm going to just pull it back and just splatter. Couple, that's all you need to do. There we go. And then feel free to be fancy and place some more dotted stars if you like, right? Maybe you want to do a constellation in the sky. Sure. Just remember you can pause this video. I'll wait two minutes before I move on, but everybody has the ability to move fast, move slower with your pause options. And what I mean by fast is keeping up with me. Okay, so I want to talk about these mountains really quick. It's not like you're just grabbing a blue and that's it. No, we're going to grab an indigo blue. Okay, so indigo blue just means, um, or it's kind of like a, it's like a cerulean blue, but a little bit, it's like a cerulean blue and then a little bit darker. Um, it has hints of uh, purple in there. Uh, it can be named a lot of different things. I find that paint colors vary with their names, but from what I'm used to, it's very cerulean and it's got a hint of purple. So it almost makes you question if it has a bit of purple in it, which it does. So how we mix this and what I'm going to use is my flat medium brush. I'm going to take equal parts of these colors and you'll find that it actually looks more blue. So if I take a nice scoop of this and a nice scoop of that, mix that. First of all, yes, it gets darker. Then you just want to take a nice chunk of white and look at that. It's a different blue. Okay, so you can play around with this color. You can add a bit more blue if you don't like it too much. How, it, you know, you're looking and you're going, it looks too much on the purple side or I need it more red. You can actually go more violet. That's okay, but I added a bit of white and you can see it's a little bit lighter and it looks like the color that I'm kind of going for. I'm gonna take another little skip of white. Someone's asking why mountains are usually painted in blue. 
Um, you know, surprisingly, depending on the, the way that the sun is hitting it, sometimes they will even look orange and they don't often look very brown, to tell you the truth. Because usually it's covered by trees and depending on the light, they appear a lot darker, especially at dusk. Um, I'm going to use this. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use like a whole ton of paint. I just kind of wiped a little bit off, but you know, not too blobby. So very carefully, it's okay if you go a little bit lower than you intend. If you go too high, it's kind of, you don't want to go too high. So around the middle, I'm like, okay, this is about the middle. I'm going to go a little tiny bit lower. It's okay to go lower. And I'm just going to go straight across. Yeah, so once again, we have this available for replay just whenever, forever. It's same link, no issues. Don't worry. I'm taking a little bit more of this paint. So you want to plan this out carefully. Think about if you're trying to copy this a little bit more closely, even though I encourage you guys to do your own thing. To see that hint of yellow behind, don't just make mountains all the way up here. You're not going to see your yellow. So you want to make it a little bit smaller. So you're only going, when you're making them, they're only staying within more of the yellow, hardly getting into any orange areas. We're not going up here. <clears throat> okay, so one of the first things that you can start with is just to go a little bit shorter first. And mountains, you know, they have various sizes and peaks. There's not just triangle, 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 right? We're trying to make it more, a bit more realistic in a sense. So what, what I would do is just, yeah, start with a triangle, make them more obtuse because with wider angles, because they tend to do that. They don't tend to just go straight down, right? They tend to be a bit more elongated. They tend to kind of droop down depending on where it is. Okay, so now, generally, it doesn't just end there and then another one starts. There's one that's kind of like attached to it or built off of it, eroded over time, just kind of, there, we have another little one here. Okay, more paint. So as I do this, we're just going to fill this in a nice layer because you can always, I like to do second coats to make sure that it's not showing any of my yellow background. Don't really care for that. Okay. So we, we want to have some nice high times here with our mountains. Sometimes a little bit of a dip and then high and then kind of low again. So we have nice elevation. Um, I think I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to go right around here. Okay. Just kind of use the thin side, go up. Make a little peak, just bring it down. Okay, and then you can just add another one, like a little extension. There, a little extension. Okay, off to the side, we have just some slightly smaller ones. I'm just using a big chunk of my paint as I fill it in. So I like to fill it in up and down, up and down with the groove of the mountain. Now you can adjust after you look at it, you can go, okay, I want to make some of them taller or bigger. So what I can do, is I can just go, go ahead and make some a little bit taller. Okay, maybe I'll just make this one a bit more pointy. You can use your detailed brush for any, any spots that you're you just don't like this brush, just use your detailed brush to do things a little bit easier, more precision. 
but I find that this angular brush is quite nice for what I want it to do. So what you want to do in the meantime is you don't want to play around with this. You actually want that to dry because then I can do some more violets in here and then some darker purple at the top, like another coat. And you can make it look a bit misty at the bottom, which is what it's supposed to be, is more misty and lighter at the bottom where it's darker at the top. A little bit easier when it's dry. So I'm going to take my, my color. You just use the same thing. You want to very carefully mimic this into the water. So that just means it's a kind of like a reflection. And at the bottom, it actually gets more deeper, more, more bluish at the bottom. And you don't have to do that. You can just leave it more of this purpley color, which is why it's nice to have it here in case you change your mind. So I'm using the thin side, go side to side. So I'm just going to go side to side like this with some water. See, touch of water, flatten your brush, meaning press on each side to keep it nice and thin at the tip of it. And just go back and forth. It's okay if it kind of looks a little bit zigzaggy. Just press a little bit lighter over here. The water, paint, because I ran out. So this is a taller mountain and I want to make sure that it goes lower down here. So it starts, it's nice to start with a base where you can get a basic shape and then build onto it before going for it all, all in. and just kind of make it nice and wispy. It's okay if it comes in a little bit more here and there, very choppy. Okay, you mix a little bit more. And if you're opting out on the blue at the bottom, that's fine. You can just leave it more like this. So from the bottom, I'm just going to basically fill it in. Um, I know that I'm going to have a lot of shrubbery here. So if you want to be a bit of a lazy painter, that's okay. But I'm just going to go fill this in. I'm going to use my bigger brush in just a minute. So a touch of water, flatten your brush. I'm going to go somewhere around here. So it's almost like touching and meeting with this, this reflection from the mountain. So it's very close to that section. Switch to my large one, touch of water, nice scoop of my paint. Okay, so one of the, the things about blending this out, I'm going to wash this off because I know it's a bit abrupt. Wash it off, go back to your medium. So let's just wait a minute. Wash off your brushes. And then we'll go back to our medium and we'll lightly blend it out back with our pink salmon, not orange, anything but orange. More of a purpley or pinkish salmon. So we'll do that in just a minute.
me and curious to see how it's going for everyone. So you can feel free to comment. We'd love to see results afterwards. If you've done this with us before, you probably know um, where to post and everything. But you can post it under the event itself or on our um, event, not, not the event page, on our Facebook page under groups. Go to Artist Palette Support Group and you can show off your results. You can even just PM us and show us what you've done if you are kind of shy. We give tips and pointers. We like to see how it's going. Okay, so to blend this out, remember you just go back to that. If you actually just wanna make a pink, you can just do pink or a bit of a purple. Remember that kind of pinkish purple mauve color um, you don't need to add a touch of yellow in here, really. I probably wouldn't do it, but you can if you want to be more exact. But you can add a touch of, you just want to add a little bit of white. Similar to what you've made at the bottom. So it's like the same thing. You just go back to a bit of that color. Wipe off a little extra paint. And you just kind of go in between. Okay, you're just going to go in between here. Let it blend out. You can add a bit more white as you get up into your salmon color. You just kind of blend that out upwards. So you just get a little bit lighter as you go upwards. And there you have it more blended. If you want to make sure that it's more salmon, just make your salmon color again. Try your hardest not to um, not to make it green. So you just want to make sure there's only a little bit of yellow and mostly pink with some white here. Just want to wash this off. Wash this off. So you take your bit of yellow, some red, some white, more white. See it's had orange. Don't want that one more pink. So it's got more of a salmon look again. And there. You just go back to that and a bit more white. Okay, and it just kind of cleans it up. Okay, you can even do the same thing with um, in between if you want to clean up some of the blue when it's more dry because otherwise it just makes green. as I was dangerously close to making green. So those are just some little things you can do if you want to clean up some of the edges here of this blue or just go back and put your salmon orange color back in. You'll, yeah, definitely wait for it to dry before you tackle that, but I'm just showing you now. I don't really, I don't really mind. And you can do the same thing basically over here. You just break up some of this, put some light colors back in. There. Put a touch of my, I like the orange color. I'm going to go and put a touch of that back in. Just right around here. I thought it was pretty nice. So while that's drying, I'm going to come back and put, you know, a bit more of a solid blue in here, or you can touch up with your, your yellow and your, your salmon color if you need to. Take your time doing it. But what we want to do, still give the mountains just another minute to dry. This should be dry. And what you can do is take, uh, let's see. You can take any circle, 
circular object, maybe a small cup, depending on the size of your canvas, of course. Wonder if my water cup is a size. Basically, yeah, okay, let's do that. I need my cup, the bottom of this cup. And I'm going to trace around it. If you look at it super carefully, it's mostly a full circle except for the bottom corner. So the reason it's not at the very bottom, because it looks a bit more, you know, it's a bit more pleasant this way, the way that, you know, that's covered sometimes. It's um, almost a full moon, except for that one little spot. I'm going to use my detail brush. And I'm just going to use white. Just a tiny touch of water, white. And just be very careful. So I'm not going to go all the way up here. I kind of want to go, I want to leave a little bit around the edges for a bit of a buffer. So more here. Yep. Okay. So except for this more on the corner of it, I'm just going to leave it untouched. And this is dangerous stuff here. Can't really see. Okay, that's fine. I can just make up the rest. Now, I'm going to use a little bit of this, some water and some white. So watery white. I'm going to sharpen. I'm going to make sure this is nice and sharp looking. So you'll notice that it's more filled in at the top here and less at the bottom. So I can just, see, yeah, I just went a little bit more right there. So it's hardly noticeable. Just wipe away that paint. So it's very, if there's any left over there. Then I'm going to go just to a slightly bigger brush just because that one, it's hard to work with. This one has a bit more of a, you know, some of the brush bristles to work with. I don't really need to add water to this. I'm just going to use it dry for now. So more of a dry brush, but if it has a bit of water on yours, it's fine. Just don't make it watery and wipe off some of the extra um, paint. So that's mostly filled in inside the brush. Then I'm just going to start at the top here. See, I'm just going to do a little bit, almost like you're just filling it a little bit more directly opposite where it's open and empty. And I'm going to start dabbing. Take a little bit of paint at a time. Start from the top corner and work your way towards the middle. And it gives it more of a man in the moon effect. So that's just the first coat. It's really hard to make it very white right away. Um, when it's more dry, I actually go around this ring again, mostly right at the back, and fill it in a bit more solid at the back so that this very light stuff is just, you know, it's like it's faded. Okay, so that's going to sit there for a bit. It's going to bug me, but fine. It has to be like that for now. Back to the medium brush whenever you're ready. So back to these mountains. First of all, let's start with our mist, okay? So the mist is just more of a light blue. So you can just take a bit of blue and some white, or you can just take a lighter version of what you've been using. Don't need to fuss about it or be too exact, but I'm just going to take a bit of blue and some white. So it's more of a, it's definitely a lighter blue if I compare it and you'll see when we're about to do it. I'm just going to go right at the horizon. 
Make sure it is lighter. See? Yes, it's lighter. And I'm going to drag it up a bit more. Just go up. So I'm just going to go up um, a little bit into the middle of the mountain, side to side. You just go side to side here. See if it looks a little bit lighter. Let's go a little bit lighter. Take a bit more white. And it will definitely look lighter as soon as we go to a darker color at the top. It's going to look a bit more misty. Definitely going to look a little bit more misty, and then we're going to go darker up here. Okay, so I'm just touching this up because, you know, I was showing you things and I was accidentally almost making green here. So this is not anything you really need to be too bothered with unless you want to fix those areas and you're trying to touch it up like me. Just wanted to fix that. Anyways, okay. Try this off. A bit more of a dry brush. We don't need to go too watery. So at the top, we're going to make more of a darker indigo color that we were just making originally. So it's this color, except a little less white. Blue, red, about equal parts. Then we're going to take just a little bit of white, and that's it. See, it's already darker. Okay. So we're going to start from the top, and I would highly recommend you take your detail brush if you are not really good with precision with this type of brush. So you can just see how I just go like this and I go up. I can just do that. Use the thin side. Very versatile. Very awesome that way. So I like to just pull this down because you can see more of the ridges on the side. I'm just going to pull it down. And I like to just kind of almost wiggle the brush a little bit. It gives it a bit of texture. Let's do it again. Pull this up. So we're going to go up. It doesn't have to be perfect line because they're not perfect. And just Well, this one is in front, so I want this to come in front. I'm going to cut off the one behind it. So I did go a little bit further down, and I'm just going to do that. Let me just blend it out. Use your finger. It's actually a really great tool for blending things out. So it's darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. Let me just do a nice little pile here and just kind of blend it out with your finger. I'm going to do the same thing here. It already creates a lot of great texture, I find. Whoop, this has a lot more red, but I'm just going to go with it. That's fine. I'm just going to leave that going to have that anyways soon. So when you um, when you kind of just let the, the texture sit, it actually looks like it has a lot more detail. And someone's asking about zinc white. Um, yeah, zinc white wood, but I would be very careful because that's just white. If you mix it with a bit of blue, perfect. Okay, now over here, we're just going to see, follow it up, back down. Let's go right in front. And just use your finger to blend this out. Look at that. So, what I would do, take a step back up close. You don't see the texture for what it is. If you see your streaks, this is actually awesome. 
So you can see my streaks just look like texture on the mountains. Pull it back, comes together really nicely. And you can do more with this. So I'm going to actually make more of a, so if you have purple, just take purple or just take um, two parts red, one part blue, no white. And you can use your detailed brush instead. But wait, wherever you think you see things, just add, um, you can add more in. So if you want to shadow like one side of your mountains, for example, just do that. Uh, take your finger and just kind of blend it out just slightly, you know, wipe off the extra paint. You can also, it's like right here, see more of a shadow on one side, an extra little layer. You try not to blend it too much. I'm going to put some in here. So I just use the thin side and pick up some of the extra paint. Thin side of my brush. Just going to put some coming down here. It's almost like I made dotted lines in a way. Here it is closer, just little blobs of paint. And then anything, you know, just pick it up. You can move the paint around with your finger to, to shape it a bit more. So what I want to do here is with my medium brush, I'm just going to do a second coat because, you know, on top of orange and yellows, it happens to turn a bit greenish. It kind of bugs me, and I'm sure it might bug you. Before you do that, make sure you're happy with these colors. We don't really see what's happening over here because of the trees, but I'm going to go back to what I had. So it's not the light mist color, it's just the same base coat that we had to start with when we first made these mountains here. Right, so if we remember that. So only in the water, we're not going in the mist part. Use the thin side, a little bit of water, and just lightly go into the same spots or build off of it. And here needs to be a little bit longer. And it gets rid of all of my green little tinges. Kind of choppy. We don't want it to be all perfect on each side. So a little bit over here. Now we can add a bit more white to this. So if I just take a little bit more white, go a tiny bit lighter, so it's almost like the mist color, you can soften some of the edges of these if you wanted a bit lighter. Right, get a little bit of some different color of blues in here. Yeah, it's a bit more depth, I feel. Okay. 
Okay, so while that just sits for a minute, there are some white streaks. We have to do that when it's dry. And um, we're going to put in the layer of black trees, silhouette trees, the black trees that are here, just along the horizon. And we're going to finish our moon before we do the white across. Let's do the trees first. Let's go closer. See every little detail. Yeah, closer. Okay. So the trees are just black. Um, very, lots of different ways that you can do these trees. I'll show you my way and my simple way. I like to start with my medium brush black and a touch of water. Nicely coated on each side. So I flatten my brush. Remember, we flatten it as we pick up the paint. So right at the where your horizon is. I like to go slightly below. I don't like to go too high. That's what you do. And my trick is to use the thin side, just like this. And just go across. Sometimes I like to go a little bit lower because we're reflecting into the water too. So we have different heights, sometimes a bit taller. You can also just use the corner to get a bit of a base coat and barrier going across. Um, you don't need to do too much on this side. It's a bit distracting with the trees, so you can just kind of trail it off. So what I mean is you can just um, do a little bit over here and then just call it a day on that side. Just mostly get it on three-fourths of the way across. Blobbing it in the middle. Okay, so use the tip, just lightly tap, tap, tap. And just reflect at the bottom too. So I'm pulling some down where I have some taller trees. And go down a little bit lower. So it's look like it's going to start reflecting. Okay, so I did a little bit of that and I'm going to switch to my detail brush. I find it's a lot better. After you do some of that, you can just very lightly, it's, it's harder with sometimes a detail brush because you have to try a bit more. Um, just want to go a little bit fuller overall in some parts, but even though, okay, so it's not going to be that dark or as black looking just because it's on top of wet paint. You just have to very carefully, lightly tap, tap, tap little dots at the bottom. I'm going to come back to this and do a bit of an extra layer of black once this is dry because it comes off a bit more gray at the moment. Try not to show too many gaps. So I want it to be more full. And that means almost like that you don't see the gaps in between the trees. It's so much of a forest that it's all just kind of meshed together. Lots and lots of trees. Okay, so that's a good start. And now we can focus on our moon. Grabbing my detailed brush again. And this time I'm going to take a little bit extra white, so I'm going to be a bit more purposeful. 
more of a white blob. Don't really need too much water here. Go very carefully. Start at the top corner, right? You're just going to go around within your moon and just very lightly, kind of lightly brush. It gets thinner and thinner. You can use a more detailed brush for this towards where it ends. And I just want to fill it in more solid up here for blobbing it. Okay, wiping off the paint. I'm gonna use my finger a little bit too, but with the most of the paint wiped off, you can just dab over the same spots to blend that out. You just dab, 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 bring it a little bit closer to the middle. And you can do whatever you want, whatever style you want for how much white you want to fill in. Okay, so just washing this off. If you go, if you're very careful, you can go back to your purple and you can just lightly tap just to get some of the less white of a look over here. But anyways, it's just the same color up here. You want to take away from some of this. All right. And same with your orange if you need to. Wash off the brushes. Let's just do a little touch up here. This is just the orangey color, kind of like digging the orange, you know? And now we can do the white streaked into the water and then we can focus on our greenery. Okay, let's pull this back a little bit. Let's put some of the white in. Um, we're not gonna put really in any white into the trees just at the moment. We're gonna wait till I would say afterwards if you want to put this in, use your medium brush and just white, touch of water. Okay. 
You can uh, get new water if you need to. So lightly coat it on each side. So use this inside of your medium. I'm just going to maybe streak it right in between. Not really any purpose here on where it is, just kind of all over the place, except um, it's a little bit more concentrated where the moon is reflected into the water. So what I like to do there is with my detailed brush, just take a detailed brush carefully. I'm just touching up on this. Carefully go and make a similar shape. You don't need to make the full circle. We're making a similar shape. It's just coming up just where it's end, kind of where the blue is kind of ended. It's going to make like a bit of a C shape. And you want it to be in line with this. I want it to be right around here. I have a bit of a line here. You don't really see it at the bottom anyways because we have a lot of bushes down here. Okay. So you make that. Pick up your paint. So the trick is to just go over this. You just go kind of like short little lines, lots of them, to mimic the shape. It looks like it's moving into the water. Sometimes longer ones. See, there's a lot of movement in the water, so it's just very streaky all over the place. I'm going to add a couple over here for good measure. Okay. See how the moon, it's in the water? It's like, you know, when you're looking at the water and it's moving, it does that, that little streaky, that streaky look. It's not a perfect reflection, which is what we're going for. That's a good thing. Okay. Now, I'm going to leave that for a minute. So I'm going to wait another minute and I'm going to touch up on the black here. And we're going to start with just black. Uh, we're going to make our trees, the shrubbery down here, after the trees, and we'll do some highlights. In the meantime, you can do your little touch-ups in between. You can blow dry it. No, I didn't do a perfect circle, so it's kind of like I'm just want to make it a bit more shaped. Anyway. I like the medium flat brush for the trees. It's my favorite. I think I'm going to just use that. Just go upwards. So just a lot of a lot of trees in between, very close together. A little bit reflected into the water. Light little taps is all I did. So it looks like it has a lot of texture. I'm 
I'm setting little blobs of black into the middle to get it much darker. I didn't want it to be too almost light gray looking. Over to the side, I kind of just left it alone. And I'm just making sure it's nice and solid. Now we can do the trees here. Hopefully we're ready for that. I'm gonna use the same medium brush. So I'll just wait a minute and I'm gonna start placing them. They're just gonna be sticks. And then we're, I'm gonna show you how um, you can make these trees or you can do different types of trees. So someone's saying that, yes, the trees do look like a heart monitor. And I do think that's the best way that you can make distant trees. They just, it works. All right, so same medium flat. Just make sure it's nice and flat there. I don't like using my detail brush for these trees because, not right now, it doesn't work out very well. It just runs out of paint and it looks... Kind of choppy okay so first of all let's just make our tall tree it's not up here it's more into in between the section right so if you went more pinkish it's more in the pink light pink or if you went a little bit more orange like me today it's more into the light orangey part so it's kind of the, the peak of it is just about the middle or a little bit below where your moon is yeah and it's pretty far in. So I have another space for a tree. So that's where I want it to be. Yep. Right here is good. I'm going to lightly press, bring it down, or you can start from the bottom and go up. Press and then just press a little bit lighter. There. And so my next one, it's going to be it's pretty close, but let's go here and we're going to go just a little bit above that mountain. There. Okay. Next one over here, we have a bit of a gap. So it's kind of, it's not above here, it's just a little bit below. And you can just bring that to the bottom. You're not going to see it anyway. To make it a little bit easier, um, just so you can tell, I'm going to roughly fill in the shrubbery at the bottom, just a bit. So I'm just using black. And I'm just using the medium. I'm just kind of pointing and sticking up. So it looks like there's lots of pointed um, little sticks and branches kind of poking out all over the place. You can also just fill in the bottom. I know it's like so scary just to fill in the bottom, but you can do a little bit of that and just do some little things poking out for now. Build onto it later because you might change your mind. You might go, you know what? I don't want too much at the bottom or none at all. Um, I like to make sure that I have some at the bottom. I think it's a nice, just kind of feels like it's engulfing the area a little bit more, more in the wilderness. Okay, so it's kind of going up a little bit on an angle, going a little bit more. 
And then just kind of fill that in, just dab and fill it in. We'll build onto that later. And now we know where the trees, you don't really have to go to the very, very bottom. Oops. All right. So one of the first things we're going to start with is getting used to making the tops of the trees because I know that a lot of people don't like making trees sometimes or they struggle with um, just with trees in general. Something about it. I like to use my detailed brush and you can use black. I'm going to, I would say if you don't want to do too many layers, you can just do a dark, dark green. I'm going to use black because I highlight with darker green after. Let's go closer. Yep, so I, it's, some people are saying I struggle with trees and I know just from doing them in person, this is a good lesson for just making trees in general. Um, specifically these ones, these ones are nice. So from the top with your detailed brush, all you wanna do is just very lightly, there's very many different ways and I do them different ways, but for these ones, let's just start with, they're kind of going upwards. See, they're just kind of going up and out a little bit. You're just going to kind of flick it just like that, kind of curled over a little bit. So they start to droop just like that. So you need water, paint, water, paint. This is actually, I don't like this brush. It runs out of paint and water super fast, not a fan. So water and paint. Um, my trick is to water, pick up your black and twirl it. So you twirl the brush as you're picking it up and it stays pointier on the end. All I, I just want to do some little tiny little branches up here and sometimes with these more coniferous trees a branch comes out of the other branch so it's like you're making another branch on top of a branch so branch branch and there's lots more into the middle so you're going to do as we go down you're just going to notice it's going to come together. It's going to start looking like it's more, um, it's like more gapped out from the outsides in the middle. It's a bit more filled in how it normally is. And they're not all just the same. You're not making a palm tree. Someone's asking about a fan brush. You can use a fan brush. Sometimes they come straight out. Sometimes they go a little bit more up. We don't want it too perfect. If you have a fan brush, let me just grab mine. I have it lightly coated with some black. Um, I would say the bottom. You can do it a lot faster. Don't do the top. But you can get a lot more done at the bottom. I'm going to show you a little bit with my medium brush. Maybe you like your medium brush a lot. So as I get down towards the bottom more, see I can just dab, press, change the angle sometimes. You can just go side to side. You can go slightly upwards instead. It gives it a more of a textured look. I really like this brush. Look at that. It already looks like a better tree. My favorite. It's a bit more because it's got trees tend to be more textured this way instead of a perfect straight line, right? Or a smooth line. So this is my favorite. Not the fan brush, but 
um, can certainly be done at the bottom with the fan brush to just get it filled in and then just go over it again. This is going into this tree, so just let it be, let it go. Okay, just change the angle. Sometimes it's drooping down, sometimes it's going up. So you just find your groove. Use a combination of these techniques. And of course, at the bottom, as you get towards the bottom, you're not going to see too many gaps. You're going to see lots more layers of your leaves, and it's going to be really solid in here. Someone's asking, how do you know how far out to go? That's a good question. So at the top, you just very gently, you just go out a little bit further, not each stroke, but you generally get a little bit wider towards the bottom. With these trees, I would actually keep them more narrow. I wouldn't go too wide out. I would keep it so that it's kind of consistent, very thin up here, and just more like a straight, not too wide tree. It's not like a pine tree that's... Um, like, you know, those Christmas trees that go really wide at the bottom, it doesn't really do that. Yeah, I'm just blobbing it in a little bit more, thicker and thicker at the bottom because that's where most of the leaves are. Going a little bit more here. You can extend some of your branches. Make sure that you're happy with the size and the width of it before you move on to the other trees. You don't want to get confused with what is what. Although it is confusing, you just don't want to go too wide accidentally. Okay. I'm just doing a little bit extra blobbing into the middle. You know, there's very different trees, different types of trees. You don't have to make it exactly like you see. Yeah, I mean, when you say straight up and down trees there, so it's nice and thin up here, very little branches and any leafiness going on or even the pine needles but it gets it doesn't go too wide it kind of just gradually goes a little bit wider but not too much okay so let's do the other trees it depends on the brush that you really like i'm just going to start this one just go a little bit into the middle And go back to my detailed brush. Cut water. Just like little flicks up here. So kind of flick it outwards. You're doing that, you can just add a little branch on top of those ones. Now flick it and pull it. It's like a little bit droopy. It's goes up and then back down. So just, just sometimes you don't need to do your whole tree like this because it looks a bit, starts looking a bit too palm tree like because you need to have some, you know, really pointy lines. Okay, so a little bit of that in here. Okay, back to my medium and I'm just, 
just kind of lightly pressing. Just very lightly, you can take off some extra paint if you want it to be a bit more not too solid. Just lightly fill in some of the gaps, but even though there's still some gaps, just add in some, they're like little extra leaves and branches poking out. You can just change the angle sometimes. You go down more droopy, sometimes more straight, or even upwards, and you get that more realistic looking textured tree. The trees are not perfect. Okay, give me one second. I'm gonna do my last tree. I forgot about my I need to get my charger. Okay, so hopefully our trees are going along pretty nicely. Just making sure that I charge my computer while we do this. Let's do the next tree. So if you want to, you, you don't all have to be, like this is the biggest tree, right? Um, you can make a last tree, you know, just a little bit more thinner overall. So not too much going on. But sometimes I like to just scribble, you can just like dab and scribble, see what comes out of it. Touch water, my medium brush. I just like to very lightly. A little bit heavier in the middle. So I just blob in the paint a little bit more so it has a nice healthy look overall. It's not too straggly. So overall, it's pretty filled in at the bottom here. You don't really see a whole lot of gaps like the water behind it unless that's what you're going for. There. And from here, we can do highlights, which are more low lights. And 
in terms of, um, you can use the same brush. You can actually use your fan brush. A lot of people were talking about the fan brush, so let's do a couple with that. When you're doing a bit of that um, slight highlight there with some green, it's it's a muddied green. We're not making a perfect bright green. It's kind of more of those natural greens, earthy greens. So a big scoop of yellow. This is not a great fan brush, by the way. My really good one is... I don't know where it is, it's lost, I'm so sad, but take a bit, mostly yellow and a little bit of blue. So about three parts yellow to one part blue. Yeah, this is way too bright. We're not using that, no good. A little bit of white. I am adding a touch of black. Maybe just like a little piece size of black, maybe a little bit less. There, now you get more of an earthy, muddy green. Okay, so I'm just wiping off a little bit of the extra paint. So here, this is... You can kind of flick it out just at the bottom, just a bit. Do a little bit of that. It's over top of freshly painted black, so it doesn't do exactly what I want it to do until it's dry. It's probably, yeah, you should wait for it to dry if you really want to get more of a, a nice um, kind of flare going out. Um, I'm going to go to my medium, no, sorry, my detailed brush. I'm going to use the same thing. I'm just going to very lightly go over some of the, the black here, especially at the top, because it seems to be hitting more of the light. And you can go even lighter. So you can add a bit more white if you're thinking it's not really showing too much. Just go and cover some of your branches here. Highly recommend this be a bit more dry before you just go for it. Lightly tapping and looking at the paint. You can use your medium flat brush to do the same thing. Just a little bit at the top here. So like you're covering all of the black, you're just covering within some of the black, but you're just adding a little extra layer. Then when you kind of lightly dab down the middle, it gives it more of a 3D look too. From the middle, just kind of lightly blob it in. Okay, so if I just go here, lightly tap in the middle, go out the other side, just a little extra layer, look at that, texture. So the middle tree, I want it to be in front of both of these trees, so I'm just going to overlap both of them. And for the bottom, this is, going to be, this is going to be great. We're going to use the same paint. You can go a little bit lighter, actually. You can add a, a bit more white and some yellow. See how you like it. So you can use something like this. You can use something like a frayed brush. Anything that's, that you think is crap is probably really good. I'll show you what that, that looks like. See how spongy that is? This is a good way to do it. Um, if you like these brushes, lightly 
use the tip here. These mostly go along the very tips of them. And you're layering over the trees because right, it's in front. And I'm going to do a second little layer. So I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just doing a little gap so that it looks like I have another little layer highlighted down here. I find that more yellowy um, green is actually really good for the natural realistic look. That's just my preference. You can do more of a bluish color. So this is more blue. You can change up the colors. Just for fun. Anyways, I like it more yellowy. Okay, so any little touch-ups you want to do into, into here is just black. You can just kind of um, separate, just bring in a little bit more, cover stuff that you don't want it to show. Here you can make some things a little bit taller. Cover some of the bottoms of these to give it a bit more of a fade from the highlight. I just lightly go over some of the bottoms. It just gives it a bit of a fade. I actually find this round frayed brush kind of cool because it gives it a really super spongy look. So yeah, very, lots of different various techniques, really fun. And hopefully this was fun and relaxing. I'm just going to put a little bit of a white highlight up here because um, the trees need to be a little bit more, have a bit more of a separation. Let's see what I mean. So a little bit of a white line. white and some water and I just want to go over where the water starts which is roughly around here Just take black paint to clean up anything that needs to be cleaned up. And I like this white line to be kind of thin. I don't want it to be too thick, so you just clean it up with some with some black. And 
And just keep it nice and thin. Not too distracting. Someone's asking about adding a bird in the sky. Um, <laughs> right, because once you put it in, like you can't really take it away. You can, and I would, it depends on where you place it. If you place it right here, yes, it will. If you place it close to your trees, it won't. So I would say visually, you want to put birds more close to this side. You don't want to fill up empty space because you want the composition to remain how it is. You don't want to fill up and make it busy with birds right here. And all, I would avoid anything else here. Birds here or here in this area. So let me know what you thought how it went for you. Once you're done, this is where you do your last little minute touch-ups. Um, we like to see results on our Facebook page. Like I was saying, you can go to our little support group on Artist Palette Durham on Facebook. You can also just message us. Just putting a little bit more blue right here so it's not too much yellow yeah that was fun thanks for joining me can't wait to see the results ask questions if you want to this was a challenging painting we're not going to say that it was easy because it wasn't Sometimes you do need to do little touch-ups with um, the white on this moon. It can take it a long way if you go more solid at the very back corner, the opposite of where the opening is. This is my third coat, and it just it, it brings it out a little bit more, I think. All right, and sign your painting at the bottom whenever you're done. We have lots more going on. Um, we have a lot of events free and on Zoom. You go to artistpalettedurham.com. Lots coming up. Check it out there. We have lots on our YouTube channel if you want to just check that out too and see uh, what else we have. Too many. <laughs> and more to come. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining me. Bye.